Did you know that diabetes affects many parts of your body, including your skin? On today's episode here on The Voice of Diabetes, we are going to talk about the skin conditions that actually tell you that there is something wrong going on in your body, whether it may be that you may be insulin resistant, you may be a diabetic or pre-diabetic. These conditions that I'm going to talk about today are actually warning signs that you need to see your doctor and get tested for diabetes. So I'm going to talk about these conditions in no particular order. This is your host, Diana Butucci. I'm a diabetes specialist. My passion is to share the knowledge with you worldwide so that I can help everyone manage their diabetes better so that you can learn and you can become more educated about this disease. Number one is going to be necrobiosis lipodietica. And this skin condition, it often begins as small raised solid bumps that look like little pimples. And obviously, as it gets worse, these bumps turn into patches of swollen and hard skin. And the patches can sometimes be yellow, reddish, or brown. You may also notice the surrounding area may have some shiny porcelain-like appearance. The skin can often become itchy and painful through cycles where it's active, inactive, and it kind of goes back and forth. So what you want to do if this is the case, and if you think you might have this, you want to get tested for diabetes. And if you are already diagnosed, you want to make sure that you're working closely with your doctor so you can get the diabetes under control. Number two is a very common one, and actually often patients will come to me and I'll hear that always felt like they needed to clean their neck area because they thought that they were dirty and they try to remove it. The one that I'm talking about is Incanthosis nigricans, and this is dark patch or band of velvety skin on the back of your neck, armpits, groin, or elsewhere, often associated with, with insulin resistance. That means you have too much insulin in the blood and it is often the number one sign of prediabetes. And as I mentioned, unfortunately, Many patients go on for years with this and they do not know. So if you do have ankynthosis nigricans, you often want to see your doctor and you want to let them know. And obviously at that point, they should be testing you for prediabetes or diabetes. Number three is digital sclerosis. And this will develop in the fingers and the toes or both. You'll notice tight, waxy skin on the backs of your hands. The fingers can become stiff and very difficult to move. If diabetes has been very poorly controlled for years, it can feel like you have pebbles in the fingertips. So it's hard, thick, and swollen looking like skin. It can spread appearing on the forearms, on the upper arms, and it can also develop on the upper back, shoulders, and neck. I do see digital sclerosis with patients who have complications of diabetes, so they've been uncontrolled for a long period of time. Normally, that's when I will get the referral and we see patients and I'll make the diagnosis of this. Sometimes I have to refer patients to physical therapy to improve mobility, um, so this is something we want to prevent. And you do that by really managing your diabetes and getting your numbers under control as soon as you're diagnosed and really working closely with your provider to do that. Number four is blisters. It's rare, but we do see blisters. It is more common in diabetes. And normally you see a larger blister or a group of a blister or both. The blisters tend to form in the hands, feet, legs, or forearms, and they look like the blisters that appear after serious burn. Normally, if you were to get burned, we know that those blisters are very painful, and I've had that myself. With these blisters developed from diabetes, they're usually not painful. They just kind of develop and they're there. And obviously, I always encourage patients not to break the blister because we don't want to break the barrier that's protecting your skin underneath. So we kind of, you know, we want to cover it. And I will have a video on how to manage blisters coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Number five is diabetic ulcers. Fortunately, this is probably one of the most common as well. A lot of diabetics go on to develop diabetic ulcers. High blood sugar for a long time can lead to poor circulation and it can lead to nerve damage. So you can develop ulcers as a result. As we know, when we have poor circulation or nerve damage, wound healing becomes very difficult and it prolongs wound healing. So of course, 
diabetics who are now well controlled have a very difficult time healing after they've injured or they've they've developed an ulcer so this is something that a lot of times we will see patients in the hospital and this is their initial diagnosis is just an ulcer that won't heal or it becomes infected and then we see them at the hospital and we make the diagnosis of diabetes or they've been diabetics and actually did not know they were diabetics and that's the first time we will see them which is unfortunate but had you know and i always tell patients the minute you have an ulcer you want to get it addressed don't wait because this can get very bad very quickly even a few days can make a big difference so i always tell my patients to call me immediately number six is shin spots also called diabetic dermopathy is a, a skin condition that creates a barely noticeable depression in the skin it's common with people who have diabetes and it can you it usually forms on the shins which is why we call it shin spots sometimes you can see on the arms thighs or trunk or other areas of the body the shin spots will be brown and they cause no symptoms if you develop shin spots as a result of age they are usually permanent they don't go away when we're talking about shin spots created from diabetes you usually they will fade away within a year to two so that's why you know you want to address this with your doctor as well and you, and you want to make sure that you're managing your blood sugars another common one is eruptive xanthomatosis often look like pimples and a lot of women will actually come to me and complain about these she develop a yellowish skin and they will appear on, on the buttocks or thighs, elbows, backs of the knees, and but they can form pretty much anywhere and they are very tender. The good thing about this is once the diabetes is under control, they usually fade away. So when patients complain about this, their sugars are usually elevated. We work very hard and we get their diabetes under control and you know, uh, magically these do disappear which is very good. So if you are seeing these pimply things, you know, forming on your skin, such as the areas I just mentioned, it is something worth noting. And if you haven't seen your, your doctor, you definitely want to go visit them soon to see where your diabetes is and get things under control. Another important skin condition is going to be the granuloma annular. It's not just from diabetes, and I probably agree, but we do see that this is more common with diabetics and this causes bumps and patches and they may be skin colored they may be red pink or bluish colors so you want to let your doctor know if you are having these and obviously you want to get this um, under control another one that's very very common is extremely dry or itchy skin a lot of times diabetics will come into my office they're always complaining my skin is so dry my skin is so itchy what's going on i will have them start testing their blood sugars and if they're not testing, they will see that the blood sugar levels are higher, which leads to the itchiness and the dry skin. Normally, I get their blood sugars under control and we work very hard to do that. And sometimes I will refer them to, to a dermatologist who can help with more control due to discomfort. The last one I want to talk about is skin tags, which are skin growths. They hang from a stalk. And usually these are harmless, uh, but obviously having numerous of these tags can be a sign that you have too much insulin or meaning you, have too, you are insulin resistant or that you have diabetes. So someone that's all of a sudden developing all these skin tags, they may think that that's normal, but normally this is a sign that you may have diabetes or insulin resistance. So normally I, I encourage people that may have these or know someone that have these to see your doctor and get tested for uh, diabetes first before you go on to see a dermatologist. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video. Please share this video with others that you may think may benefit from this video. Once again, if you are new, consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you guys all on the next video. Take care.